What's up everybody, it's me Roku back with some more league content and in this video we're going to cover the champion durability update that is incoming in patch 12.10. Now I was going to edit this video with visuals and gameplay and whatnot but I have to rush it out the door as soon as possible so we're going to basically go through my notes that I made for myself and talk about my analysis of how this will impact champions, different champion roles, different champion types and just the meta in general. Now, I was streaming when I was informed that they wrote this article, I read it, they're apparently increasing the durability of champions, decreasing the amount of damage in the game to basically make sure that fights last longer. Now, as a big time critic of the current state of just champions one-shotting each other, I should love these changes, but I don't really trust Riot Games that much. In the past, they've done things that aren't really at all what they've said they'd do, so I more so possess the perspective that I'll, I'll read what they say, but I'll judge what they do. Actions over words. But Vanagel basically made a video where he talked about every single one of these stats that are basically being changed. The literal nerfs and buffs. So I'm going to basically go through everything and talk about how it impacts everything else. And I have this video here for some reason. Let me just uh, close that. <laughs> okay. So um, first off, let's just get right into the literal changes and talk about how each of them impacts everything else. Base health is increased by 70 and this is going to be given to every single champion in the game. To better understand how this impacts everyone, let's just look at the numbers. So the base health increase is going to be the biggest buff to champions who don't really have much base health to work with. We're talking your ranged champions, let me just sort this. We're talking your ranged champions, ranged mages, ADCs, just backliners who don't really have any just stats at all to basically defend themselves. They're going to buy stuff to be stronger. So if you're talking like somebody with like 500 health, this is like a straight 14% increase in the amount of health they have. This will still buff the more tanky champions in the game, like your Trinimirs and stuff who get more base HP to work with, but not as much. It's more of like an 11% increase in their HP. Up next, we have health growth, which is the same, same concept. It's a big buff to people with a lot of, like with not a lot of HP growth, but it's just like, it's still a decently sized buff to people who still have a lot of HP growth to begin with. Up next, we have armor growth. This is going to be absolutely huge because the people who are doing the one-shotting are a lot of times AD champions. So the armor is going to be huge to champions, again, who don't have much armor growth to begin with. Some of these champions will get like, you know, basically, you know, like 30%, sometimes double, nearly double the amount of armor growth per level. And some of these champions, though they don't get as much, you know, armor growth as the others, they'll still, you know, benefit from these changes. Up next, which is... Quite underrated in terms of how much impact it has is MR growth. Now, MR growth, like historically, has been super, super, super low in the game. The highest amount of natural MR growth a champion has is Silas, who is the anti-mage champion. And it's only just 1.75. Most champions, a lot of champions just don't even have more than one. It's like 0.5 and stuff. So this increase in MR growth will double the amount of MR some champions get Per level more than double so it's an absolutely huge 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 change so from these changes these changes we can tell that the champions who have not a lot of base stats will benefit from these a lot more whereas the champions who already have a lot of stats will still benefit but just not as much okay so we're kind of starting to understand that this is more so helping adc's and squishy champions and champions who like to scale a bit more up next, heals and shields are reduced. Now, you might think that this is a nerf to everybody who heals, everybody who likes a shield, but that's not really the case. So all the champions who rely on lifesteal and only have like Aatrox and stuff, are they are going to be nerfed by this, but this is going to basically make sure that the fights last longer. And when the fight lasts longer, the champion who does a lot of this lifesteal stuff has more opportunities to hit people and basically heal more health. Same for enchanters. Because the fights last longer, it gives the enchanters more time to basically get more shields out. So even though this is a straight nerf, it's not as bad as it seems, right? Because of these, this just increase in the length of the fights, they're just adjusting everything else so that it kind of matches up with the increase just, just the longer fights. Grievous wounds are being reduced. This is absolutely huge for a lot of, like, you know, the healing champions. But this will put some other champions over the edge, you know, like... The big counter to Soraka was the Grievous Wounds. Then we're kind of like, you know, we're kind of nerfing Grievous Wounds. It's just like, we're going to basically have to nerf a lot of champions in addition to these changes to basically bring everybody into line. Thankfully, though, Riot have basically had some foresight into this. So every single aggressive sort of form of lifesteal in the game has been nerfed. 
They nerfed Conqueror, Gold Drinker, Maul, just everything there is. They're not nerfed it by that much, just by a few percentages at most, but the largest nerf here is to Divine Sunder. Now, with them nerfing Divine Sunder this badly, and this is already the nerf version of Divine Sunder, I just don't see people building it as much anymore. Now, I'm kind of glad that they're nerfing it, because I personally don't like how Divine Sunder has kind of messed up some matches top lane, but again, they're going to have to basically add some more stats to this item to bring it back into the game. The other big nerfs are to the amount of armor pen in the game, just just penetration. They've messed up with the penetration of Void Staff, which is like the huge magic pen item in the game, and they've also reduced the armor pen of Lord Dominic's regard, which was basically just super, super, super OP in the game. They've also reduced some of the more, you know, annoying percentage health damages in the game, like Demonic Embrace. Moonstone got nerfed, which is a great change because Moonstone was overpowered. <laughs> and they've also nerfed Sunfire Aegis, so champions don't just stand around you and one-shot you. They've increased mana regen, which this is not going to change anything too much. Conditioning has been nerfed a bit, which sucks, but not a lot of people go conditioning anyway. Baron damage is increased, so you have to be kind of more fed earlier on to just rush Baron as soon as it's spawned. It's going to take a bit more time to kill the Baron as well, and it will be a more dangerous to kill because they're giving it like a hun oh my well, they're giving it 85, but they're giving it a lot of AD, and it's going to basically do more damage. So Baron fights are going to be more dangerous earlier on in the game, which is a big plus in my opinion, because with the amount of damage increasing in the game, Baron is basically just a minion. You have like one champion that tanks, one champion that does damage, and you just kill it in like two seconds. They also increase the turret damage by an insane, insane, insane amount. Like, just look at these changes. The initial increases are not that much, but holy, like, as the game goes on, it increases by like a hundred or so. So, like, the turret damage increases are certainly a welcome addition, and they're going to make it a bit more difficult to siege ways and just siege lanes. So, Riot is basically making sure that the games and fights last longer, okay? With this basic concept in mind, I think we can all pretty much tell that this is a huge buff to every single scaling champion in the game. Every single one. All scaling champions in the game just received a huge buff. Because the natural predator of scaling champions are champions who spike early and just destroy them. But with these changes, these champions that spike early are a bit weaker. Like, scaling champions don't have a lot of early stats to work with, right? But they now have, they got the equal buff, but this is buff to these guys more than these early strong powers. So, like, this is a huge buff to all scaling champions. Okay, let's talk about who's happy and who isn't. By roles, top lane is going to receive an overall positive change, in my opinion. Jungle is going to be negative, mid's going to stay the same, ADC is going to be super positive, and support's going to be just positive. I'll go into these changes like in more detail when we cover the champion types, because different champion types go different roles. People who love these buffs the most will be the squishy backliners ADCs, right? A lot of the backline mages get so much HP and stats from their items anyway, so some of them won't really be as happy about these as ADCs, because ADCs usually build no defensive options. Supports that are squishy like Nami, Sorakas, Janas will also love these because not only are they getting more stats where they don't have stats, so they'll be more durable, like they'll be relatively more durable with these buffs, they will also have longer fights so they can get more shields out, more heals out, all that good stuff. Scaling mages like your Victors, your Vagars, because God knows Vagar is an overpowered already, but <laughs> that's sarcasm. But yeah, um, scaling mages will love these changes. But the mages who kind of dip into the more assassiny playstyle, like your Akali's, your like your Katarina's, will not really like these changes as much. Bruisers and tanky fighters will love these changes because they're frontliners, right? They won't really get one shot as fast anymore. And in general, the I mean the tanks love it in for, because of this. But a lot of the bruisers are stronger as the fight goes on, and because the fights are longer, a lot of the bruisers will love these changes. Assassins though will not like these changes at all. So. Before we get into the more complicated stuff, let's just talk about the assassins and their state in the current game. Right now, an assassin can just get a few kills and not just one shot on ADC, but one shot them like two, three times over, right? They don't even have to use their main skillful part of their kit to kill that ADC. Now, Riot made a good point here where they talk about like the primary skill check, like right here, I think. Okay. So, champion's key skill test. I liked how they put this, but basically speaking, right? They brought the example of Zed, where when you think of the cool Zed gameplay, it's him doing some sort of thing with his shadows and landing a triple shuriken, right? If you get hit 
by a triple shuriken, you should get one shot just quickly. But currently, Azet can just get two, three kills, and all he has to do is W on the ADC, E them, maybe all of them once, and then ult, and the ADC will just die. He, he doesn't have to land any shurikens to kill the ADC. All of this is not just me saying, oh, it's all about the assassins being overpowered, but it's just how much damage there is in the game, because ADCs are super, super difficult to kill when they're near their supports, okay? Supports have basically messed up the meta of the game, because... Like, ever since, like, a few seasons ago, they've gotten increasingly more and more and more powerful. People who've played the game, like, in the very old days, remember, supports were basically just bots who ran around placing wards, but now, they're basically the most powerful role in the entire game, without being the hardest one by far. And, because supports are so powerful, any ADC that stands near your support is going to be immensely difficult to kill. Have you, as a person who dives into just kill squishies, ever, like like, fought against an ADC that's being peeled by a Lulu, it's, like, impossible to kill them. Lulu will polymorph you, Lulu will shield the ADC, they give them base HP that you can't even cope with Grievous Wounds. It's just impossible to kill an ADC that properly works with their support. Because of how powerful supports are, every single champion whose job it is to kill ADCs has to overcompensate in damage to basically keep things even. Because assassins are the primary people whose job it is to kill ADCs, they're like the ones that look the most ridiculous because like they're the ones who kill these guys. They have to be this ridiculous to match up with how broken supports are. TLDR, assassins are in a completely unhealthy state in for, like for the game because they just kill everything too quickly. An assassin that's fed can not only one shot ADCs with a, like a thought, they can one shot like durable champions like tanks and bruisers with their full kits. This is absolutely ridiculous because more durable champions with stats are the traditional counter to assassins, so this should not be the case at all. And since Riot won't nerf supports, like, we have to basically nerf assassins, right? This is also why squishes feel so bad to play, especially in low elo, because in low elo, your support's not gonna know what to do, and they're not gonna, no one in your team is gonna peel you, so you're alone. And when ADC is alone, they just get killed so quickly, so mercilessly, so yeah. As we can all tell, there is an insane backline meta that is about to be thrust upon us, right? ADCs are getting a massive buff, supports are getting a slight buff, but they're already overpowered, so they're getting even stronger. So it's going to be an insane bot lane meta, in my opinion, where whoever wins bot lane is basically going to have a lot better time just crushing the game and scaling, right? But because we are a top lane channel, let's talk about how top lane is impacted. Let me just get some water here. Okay, top is going to be both positively and negatively impacted by this, depending on the types of champions. So, champions that success, that succeed, <laughs> that success, all right. Champions that succeed with longer fights will absolutely love these champions. Like, you're talking your Dariuses, your Aatroxes. Like, when they get more strength as the fight goes on, like, it makes sense logically that they'll success succeed more in a meta where fights generally last longer. Darius specifically, because with Darius right now, his his role in the game has basically changed into like like an assassin, right? You don't actually play Darius like you used to in like season ten, season nine. You play him like okay, I'm just gonna play safe until I have my summoner spells, and when I have my summoner spells, I'm basically gonna one shot all the backliners. So with these changes, Darius is gonna get like a rework back to his form that everybody fell in love with, where you wore this big durable fighter that was just a menace in lane. You could actually survive for three seconds in a team fight. So this is gonna be a huge, huge buff to Darius and other champions like Darius. Well, not huge, huge, but decent buff. Champions who also unfortunately will love these changes are ranged top laners because ranged top laners typically don't have much stats to work with. So with a ranged top laner, once you catch them, they're doomed, right? Once you catch them, when you get on top of them, they're dead because they don't have much stats. But because they have more stats and they disproportionately benefit from these stats more than you, the medium top laner, ranged top laners are going to get a huge buff from these changes. Your Quins, your Veins, your Akshans, they're just going to love these buffs. Mobile fighters will actually be impacted somewhat negatively as well because, you know, a lot of the mobile fighters kind of act like assassins that are just tanky. Riven is basically just a tanky assassin, so, like, with them increasing the length of fights, her burst isn't going to be as, like, you know, as devastating anymore. Anyone who relies on Ignite in lane will be nerfed. Ignite has completely ruined the fun of top lane. 
whoever takes Ignite basically has like a kill button that destroys you when your health is low. And for a lot of top lane champions, that's when the fight is the most fun. So yeah, this is also a huge buff to Darius because Darius is typically countered by Ignite. Now, because we're scaling back the amount of just running around one-shotting going on by junglers and by, you know, fed mid laners, this is going to be a huge buff to top lane in that if you win top lane, your power spec is going to be even larger because you don't have these fed Akalis or whatever just killing you out of nowhere, right? These things don't occur anymore. So for people who win top lane, you now have more space to carry team fights and do stuff like that. So that is absolutely huge. This is why top lane is buffed in general because like, the main weakness of winning top lane is that even if you win, as long as there's someone who's fed on the enemy team, they will just one-shot you no matter what. But because they're kind of nerfing these things, if you win top lane, you're basically going to be able to carry games way more. Champions that rely on percentage health through damage are absolutely going to love these changes. Vayne's going to be great. Fiora is going to be basically the most overpowered champion in the game. She's already the most overpowered top laner in the game. Well, she's tied to Riven, but Riven is going to be actually nerfed by these changes, whereas Fiora won't really care at all. Riot have announced that they'll do a micro patch nerf to her, but I don't think it's going to be enough. So let's just hope that Fiora doesn't destroy everybody, does she? Right? Because let's be real, she does two damage based on your percentage health, so the buffs don't matter for you, but the buffs matter for her because she also gets those buffs. You get what I'm saying? It's like. You both get a gun, but she already has, like, the counter to a gun. So, yeah, Fiora's gonna be the best top laner with these changes, and I just hope that they absolutely crush her ankles with some kind of nerf. Scaling champions in general will love these, whereas early game champions will not. Lastly, let's just get into my opinion on these changes. I generally like these changes, right? We are, like, basically peeling back the horrible meta we are in right now, where everybody's running around killing everybody. This is not healthy for the game, this is not fun, this is horrible, and every single assassin who requires skill no longer requires skill because they don't have to actually land any of their, like, difficult parts of their kit, okay? So because these changes, the game's gonna require a bit more skill right now, the fights are gonna be way better, and I'm just gonna have more fun with the game, and I'm pretty sure you guys will have more fun with the game too. But... There is one huge worry in that we're now jumping back into a scaling backline loaded meta where whoever wins bot lane wins the entire game. You guys remember, I don't know if some of you guys do, but before season 11, we're basically in a massive meta where whoever won bot lane won the entire game, right? Just every single time. So I just hope we don't go back into that. And if we do, I hope that they actually nerf support this time because support is the main issue with bot lane. If you actually remember with Ard and Meta and whatnot, every single time bot lane is overpowered, it's usually because of support and not ADC, okay? So if we maybe peel back the power of support, maybe rework how they gain gold so they don't actually have as gold efficient items as the rest of the champions, and we can maybe like reduce the amount of damage in the game properly so that ADCs can actually function alone, etc, etc, etc. Alright guys, that is pretty much it for this video. I would have loved to put more time into this and make it a greater video, but I have to study a lot for next week, so this is what we're getting. I just hope that my analysis helped you guys expand your view of how these changes will impact the game. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I'll see you next one. Peace out.